Let's prepare our minds and hearts for worship just by meditating for a few minutes as we give reverence to the Almighty.
leprosy has. And he said, so it is with the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed unto the ground, and should keep, and should sleep, and rise at night and day, and the seed should spring and go up. He knoweth not how, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, and then the ear. After that, the full corn and the ear. But when the, the fruit is brought forth, immediately she put it in the side garden, because the harvest is come. And he said, where am she?
praise to you, O God. Blessed be thy name. Thank you, Holy Father, for this prayer. I return it back to you. With love. Blessed Thank you, Holy Father. I'm so glad. Jesus lived in me.
going to be singing his latest song for us that evening. And I'm not going to tell you who he is just yet, but all of our young folks, uh, when I say young folks, uh, Shabina and Nikaya and all that, they all grew up together. We bless the Lord once again for his goodness. Um, this song is precious, Lord, take my hand. Lead me on and let me stand. It's one of the songs that Sister Annie always sings on Fourth Sunday, and we pray for her strength in the Lord this morning. We know that because of our hope and faith in Christ, that we can reach our hands to God and he will help us and lead us and guide us. Precious Lord, take my hand.
breaks through us the river of life. Yeah. I was young, but I Yeah. Amen. 
this message of the week testify about a good job street. How he brought us out over an under bad situation. We brag about his ability to be a lawyer in the courtroom and a doctor in the sick room. He's been a mother since mothers been known. He's been a father since fathers been known. We, we brag about how he kept us when we couldn't even keep our sick. Come on, somebody. Y'all know I'm right about it. We, 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 we brag on God. Yeah, we testify about We talk about how we'll still be on drugs if it had not been for the Lord. Yeah, we talk about how we still be out in the streets doing everything up under the sun. God had not stepped in and snatched us out. But here's what I found interesting to the read in my text. We shout from the rooftop when God steps in and does something amazing in our life. But nobody shouts or testifies when God allows storms to enter into our lives. Oh, my brothers and sisters, nobody wants to shout or give God credit when storms come. My brothers and sisters, I didn't come today to make any of them prosperity claims. Because I really don't know when or what God is going to do in your life. I didn't come to sell your dreams and didn't come to promise your blessings and didn't come to tell you this is going to be your year. Didn't come to tell you that being a Christian is going to get you more from God. Because at the end of the day, God will bring some things in your life to grow you where he's trying to get you. All right, that's up. Yeah. No, it didn't come to give you a little prosperity message. Right. But what I did come to remind us is from the pulpit to the pews All right. is that you're going to have some storms in your life. Yes. Yeah, I'm not talking about the storm that we had last night. No, I'm not that kind of storm. I'm not talking about the storm that even said it's coming today. I'm talking about the storm, the trouble, trials, and tribulations. Yeah, I'm talking about spiritual storm. Yeah, if you lost a loved one, and you don't seem to be able to get over it. You're in the storm. If you got more money going out than you got coming in, you're in the storm. If you're struggling with a wayward child and problems and problems keep ailing you, you're in the storm. If you lost your job and all the doors seem to be closed and nobody seemed to be wanting to hire you, you're in the storm. Yeah. If you've been diagnosed with illness or sickness and life is just mistreating you, somebody knows that by now what I'm saying is that you're in the storm. Yeah. If your marriage is a little rocky and the one that tells you that you my boo and you know I love you, but right now they don't seem to be acting like it. I just stop by to tell somebody you're in the storm. But here's what you may have missed in John 16 and 33, where Jesus himself said that you would have trouble, trials, and tribulations. Job even helped me push my argument a little far. But Job said, man born of a woman is few days and full of trouble. This may be a news for somebody in the day that no matter how saved you are, no matter how much you run around this church, no matter how many Sundays you show up, don't care how much Bible study you attend, 
in your life.
Christian whatsoever. John 10 10 says, The thief comes to steal, kill, slaughter, and destroy. But I come that you may have life and have life. Oh, I got some life in here now. More abundantly. Romans 6 and 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life. And I wish I had some money. The knew that that was unconditional. But then he makes us a conditional promise. This type of promise is subject to certain qualifications and requirements. That is why it is important to understand the context of the promise. It is not as wise to pick a random promise and claim it as your own. The promise is that God gives the conditional and unconditional. We may not meet the requirements. Here it is. Now the Lord has said to Abraham, the part from this country, uh -huh. and from your children, and from your father's house, yeah. to a land that I will show you. Uh -huh. In other words, God promised Abraham. Yes. Told Abraham that you're going to be a father of all nations. Yeah. And God kept his promise. Yes, he did. So whenever God promises something, I'm just trying to tell you, stay with the ship. Because God promises bigger than your problem. I don't know who I'm speaking to, let me say it again. Somebody's right there on the edge that won't throw in the towel. Time to come to church. But I can't even tell you to stay. Stay with the ship. Because God's going to grow you. Not only that, God says, if you stay with the ship, I'm going to help you. But not hurt you. Uh -huh. Good news. God said, I want to help you. Not hurt you. Listen, the ship that Paul and was sailing on was failing. And they wanted to jump overboard. Everybody was ready to run. That, 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 that really, really, really bothers me. Our church folk. That when the ship is having a little difficulty, uh -huh. folk want to bail yeah. on the ship. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a lot. But let me drop this on you. When you get on the next ship, this might have some problems too. Yeah. So, in other words, oh, I hear you, Big Mama. Big Mama said, Grass ain't no greener. Oh, oh somebody else got a Big Mama. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stay with the ship because God is here to help you, not hurt you. Hurt you. I'm always encouraged by this because it kind of reminds me back when Grandma used to always tell me that she was just getting ready to have a switch that she had me go get. Whoa. And it's going to help you. You're going to thank me when you get low. And I just always ask me, Mama, I don't know how this is going to help me. And I don't know how this is going to make me thank you later. But what's I have wrong? I had my own children. Now I understand that she was just trying to help me. She wasn't trying to hurt me. Sometimes you got to get a little discipline. In Christianity, in order to grow you, God sometimes has to chasten us in order to give us to where He's trying to take us. And sometimes we might not like it, but in spite of it, that it's going to help you and not hurt you. Well, oh, I need to call some Bible witnesses, though. Yeah, Moses needed some help. With this angle, God wasn't trying to hurt Moses. He was trying to help Moses. So God had to chasten him a little bit. Naaman 
school calls. Yeah. And every month, mama would pay a little more. Yeah. And when school got ready, mama would make that last payment. Yeah. And she would get my school clothes out yeah. of that way. And that's what Paul is saying. A little crown of righteousness yeah. waiting on me. The God is going to give it to me.
have said we have not because we ask not. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you give comfort right now. Realizing that you know the situation. You know what they are dealing with. Give them the strength to accept what has been done as your will. We, oh God, sometimes question and ask why. But it's not ours to ask why. But to hear and obey. We obey right now, Lord. And call on you for comfort. Call on you to give ease to a troubled heart. We pray and ask right now in the name of Jesus. Do it right now, Lord. Lift up right now. Heal right now. In the name of Jesus. I know you can find up the road.
I know I believe God's name. Amen. When I look back, I just know there was nobody but God who had all of this heart. We got God to be faithful. Amen. 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 Verse 2. Verse 2. Verse 2. Lord, I come to you right now. First of all, we just tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in this service one more time. Lord, we pray for somebody that said, Reverend, you pray. Please pray for me. Lord, I don't know that situation, but you're the God that knows all things. So we ask that you just be with him and touch him right now. Lord, we pray for this, this church right now. Father God, we ask that you bow to the goodness, rest so tight with one another, but one can't fall without the other. Lord, we pray for the shepherd of this church. Lord, keep them in perfect peace. Give them to the sheep. Lord, when it's all said and done, we give you praise, honor, and we give you glory. Yes, yes. Very grace of God and the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit.